I can tell you from my friends around town, uh, text messages, questions that I get from John Morris on the radio show, the excitement is at an all-time high. And I'm just really excited to open those doors a little bit earlier on January 2nd and let the, the guests come in, you know, circulate the building, see the signage that we have, and then get in their seats for game day to really impact the outcome of the game. So this is a completely different experience um, than, than at the Ferrell Center. We wanted to replicate a pavilion feel, like a field house feel, but the one thing we didn't want to replicate was shadows or right. sight lines from sun. Uh, to me, it's unlike an experience that we've ever had. You know, the Ferrell Center has approximately 2,000 spots uh, around to park. It's very horizontal in nature. Foster Pavilion, it has more of a downtown feel, and it's very vertical in nature. So there's advantages and disadvantages to that. We're going to focus on the advantages of having the guests right on top of the action, really impacting the outcome of the game for, for Coach Drew and Coach Cullen. It will be louder at the right times. You know, we don't want to distract from what's going on on the court, but when it's time to celebrate a dunk or a 12-0 run, we want to make sure that the, the decibel level is at its highest uh, so that the visiting team has trouble telling them how to make adjustments for the home team. We've uh, consulted with a company called uh, Edubri. Now they've changed their name to Solus O'Brien. They actually measure decibel levels. Every inch of this building has been uh, tested, measured. There's acoustic baffles to make sure that the, the sound is reflecting back towards the court, specifically at the visiting team uh, areas. But there are actually ways to measure sound. And uh, I'm not a scientist, but I can t assure you that they have measured every decibel of every square foot of the, the bowl. We're, we're basically in the north end of the arena, and we're looking south. So just to give you kind of oriented on a game day, you will see the gold uh, telescopic seating that will be pulled out. The home team will sit in the northeast corner. The visiting team will sit in the southeast corner. The students, there will be about 200 students sitting directly behind the visiting team and the scores table. There's additional student seating in the section that's uh, directly across from me in the southeast corner, and then the band will sit in the southwest corner. So we're hoping that the visiting team is surrounded by students, band, and they can't hear anything their coaches are, are telling them. That's a reference to when the university opened, obviously, so um, we've got that. We've also got a reference to the national championships, the four national championships on the sidelines. But there have been a lot of uh, renderings, Mac Rhodes and Jovan Overshone were instrumental in reviewing those options. Uh, but we hope we have a court design that's it's simple, yet it's impactful to the broadcast and to our guests in the stadium. It's going to be massive uh, LED video boards, so on a women's game, it's probably going to show the starting five for the men's game. It'll show stats, but it's really going to be Really nice when the guests come up the main grand stairs and they're hit with this digital technology right from the start. It's really open so the guests can actually see the food being cooked right there in front of them, see it, smell it. Uh, so we have five concession stands at Foster Pavilion. And there's also room in the, you know, when we open it for the first game, January 2nd, we want to get the flow of our guests and see where people are going. But we do have the ability to add some portables in the future particularly on the mezzanine level, the, the third level of the facility, in case we want to add concessions options up there. So we have another overlook. What I'm excited about on this wall, which might not be ready for the first game, is we're going to do a history of the Baylor logo. And it's going to be a time, so it's almost like an evolution of the logo. And it, I think it's going to really look good. There is a level you can walk underneath the stands. It's 360 around, so you can get to your seat without interrupting someone's view. You know, our guests are going to enter from the south end, so why would you want to come to the north end? We're actually going to have two actual courts from the first time our women's team won the national championship and the first time our men's team won the national championship. Both happen to be in Indianapolis. So on the wall on the north end, we're hoping that'll have guests gravitate towards that north, have their kids, they can touch the, the court, take pictures in front of the court. But we thought it was really neat to have the 2005 national championship won in Indianapolis and the 2021 national championship won in Indianapolis. The facade is not going to be complete. There's um, very decorative banners, 
Um, there's some other things that face the south plaza. So it won't be, it won't look pretty, but mm -hmm. it will be functional. University Parks Drive um, does need some, some paving. So we're gonna have a temporary solution for the first game, because we've gotta get our fa fans, our guests, our shuttles to the front door of Foster Pavilion. So it may not be a finished product, but it will be a drivable product. And I can tell you the city of Waco has been a tremendous partner in assuring that the pathway and the drivable areas, the hardscape, like the, seated, the sidewalks, the lighting, it's all gonna be in place. It really brings Baylor campus, you know, west of I-35, so we're very excited about that. Uh, it gets us closer to downtown. I've seen uh, City of Waco uh, renderings and publishings that they're going to add two restaurants in the area. So it really just makes a vibrant experience. You know, the Ferrell Center is an amazing facility, but you didn't quite have that atmosphere, that kind of that downtown city feel. So we're hoping that our guests will not only come for game day, but come a few hours early, stay a few hours late, and really make a day of the event. This project has been going on for at least four years, so it's, it's very gratifying. If, if Mac had told me a couple years ago that, hey, you're going to get to open McLean Stadium, and oh, by the way, you're going to get to open Foster Pavilion, and on top of that, you're going to get to open Fudge Football Development Center, I probably would have passed out. It's just, it's a great challenge, it's very rewarding, and to see it coming true now, it's a great Christmas gift.